Naomi Twining and William Provencia were just children when they were among the first to reach the infamous murder scene of Toledo bootlegger Jack Kennedy on July 3rd, 1933. But before that night, they were just kids living in Point Place, trying to survive. Point Place was in the in the depth of the depression at that time. Most families, if you had anybody working, you were fortunate. In the summertime, we roamed around as boys barefooted. If your parents took you for ice cream or something, you never told the other kids because you didn't want to hurt their feelings. We moved to the point in 32. It was cheaper to move than to pay rent. <laughs> rent was only f about $15 for a furnished home. We couldn't be choosers. We had to live where we could. Mostly it was neighbors taking care of neighbors back then. Naomi says the times were hard, but they still found ways to enjoy the simple pleasures of growing up. Roller skating, catching turtles, and hanging out at Willow Beach, a local amusement park on the water. We had a family, the Kennedys, and they lived a few doors down, and I could smell her baking bread. In those days, you just went in and out of people's houses. I'd never knock, and she would feed us some bread. That was a big deal. Jack Kennedy, a popular bootlegger and nightclub owner, was well-respected throughout Toledo, as was his girlfriend, the mysterious Audrey Rawls. When Detroit's ruthless Licavoli gang started to muscle in, Toledoans were terrified. Jack, however, remained undaunted. Jack was a nice-looking guy, very athletic and a good boxer, and he fought uh, a number of times. Of course, he, he had uh, experience in his uh, businesses, his saloons and so forth. He was a tough guy. On the night of July 7th, 1933, Jack and Audrey went for a walk in Point Place. Yanni Licavoli's gangsters followed them and gunned Jack down on the corner of Edgewater and 140th Street. Our house was three-fourths of a block from the scene of the Jack Kennedy assassination. My brother was sitting in a chair at the side of 140th Street, and I heard him say, Mother, Mother, they're killing a lady down at the corner. My brother and I were uh, just a, a block down 140th Street. We heard this big automobile pull up. We heard these shots. So we heard the woman scream and we saw the car pull away real fast. A big car was unusual for, for our area. We ran down to the corner and we were amongst the first to get to the body. He was just losing life. He was gone and I swear that I saw him with a, had a cigarette in his mouth laying there. District Attorney Fraser Reams and Toledo Police worked tirelessly to find the killers. Months later, witnesses finally began to step forward and they identified the shooters, John Mirabella and Joseph Wap English. There was a lady that later testified at the Licavoli and the Wap English trial, Helen Booter. She was the one that covered the body with a sheet. Just a few of the neighbors there at first, and then of course the crowd picked up and the more people got there. And I just stood there. It was a detective, I know. And Audrey Rawls, who had been with uh, Jack Kennedy, uh, was in there begging to let her go home and change her clothes. So she must have had soiled clothes on at that point. He went for, was going for a walk that night and he told his bodyguards he didn't need them to stay there and, and he would go alone. And that's somehow or they, they spotted him and picked him off and, and killed him. Seeing the body there didn't have that much of an effect because my parents took care of it. We immediately must have been whisked back home. They didn't want us to know. Eventually, Reams and his staff prosecuted the entire gang, and Prohibition ended just six months after Jack's death. Now free from the gang's clutches and with liquor legal, Toledo found hope again, but not all the answers. 
questions lingered, and many people still wonder, did Audrey set Jack up? The only thing that brought us out of it was prohibition ended. Weber's down at the end was the first ones to have beer. Three bottles for a quarter, and they would drink in their cars. <laughs> and then we would, the kids, we would pick up the beer bottles and turn them back in. We would roller skate at that hardware store, which was the location for this murder, almost every evening. And of course, this happened in July, nice July evening. And for some unknown reason, we weren't roller skating. Unbelievable, which leads me to wonder if anyone knew that his life was in danger or what would happen later on. I don't think the whole story has really ever been told.